Well, that was unnecessary. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most awkward TV cameos ever. Looking for more WatchMojo videos with a British twist? Well, pack your bags and take a trip to WatchMojo UK for even more bloody brilliant content. For this list, we'll be looking at unnecessary and awkward cameos and minor roles from celebrities in a television show, whether they're playing themselves or a fictional character. We won't be considering the celebrity's acting talent, unless of course it's bad enough to drag down whole scenes, but we'll be focusing on how awkward, needless, fan pandering, or immersion breaking the cameo or minor role was. Number 10, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Friends. Jean-Claude Van Damme. I didn't know he was in this movie, he is so hot! We know we just said that we wouldn't be taking acting ability into account, but holy cow is Jean-Claude Van Damme really not in his element here. Granted, he was never really known for his acting prowess, but rather for his fighting skills. She thinks you're cute. You don't think I'm cute? Jean-Claude Van Damme appeared in the Friends Season 2 episode, The One After the Super Bowl, and that title is rather indicative of the episode's overall quality. Cause Rachel told me uh, you were dying to have a threesome with me and uh, Drew Barrymore. But by the way, Drew has some ground rules. It's clear that they wanted to capture as many demographics as possible, which included the masculine fans of football and of Van Damme, who wouldn't normally tune into Friends. His awkward and chemistry-free inclusion felt like a relatively obvious ratings ploy. Can't you see what's going on here? This man is dying! Number 9, Pete Wentz, One Tree Hill. Yeah, I heard that band sucks. The bass player's pretty cool. Some musicians make a flawless transition from music to screen. Think Will Smith or David Bowie. Others, like Pete Wentz, should probably stay in the recording booth. Wentz, the bassist and lyricist of rock band Fall Out Boy, appeared with the entire band in the One Tree Hill episode, an attempt to tip the scales, playing their song Dance Dance. Fair enough. A scripted performance by a popular band is always a welcome addition to any teen-centric series. However, things get a little dicey when Wentz starts dating Peyton later in the season. So I thought you were blowing me off. I said I'd be here. Uh... <laughs> He's not the greatest actor, and his forced inclusion feels more like fan baiting than a worthwhile story addition. I mean, even though we just met each other, I feel like I know you pretty well. Number eight, Chris Brown, the OC. Seeing the world through the eyes of an animal forces us to see the world and ourselves in a new light. Thank you. Chris Brown appeared for a three-episode arc in the fourth season of The O.C., which aired in 2007. Yes, this was before the Rihanna incident, when Chris Brown was a significantly less loaded name. But this O.C. cameo wasn't very good nonetheless. Brown plays Will, an intelligent student who takes the rebellious Caitlyn under his wing as her tutor, and the two soon grow an attachment. Kind of weird since we barely studied last night. It's typical high school drama TV, but it's brought down by Brown's rather inadequate acting. He mumbles through his lines, delivers them as if he's reading off a cue card, and conveys the same expression no matter what the content of the scene. I thought you liked that. You know who else is a dork? Is that Lucy chick? I mean, she's got a pretty hot bod for a dork. Number seven, Ed Sheeran, Game of Thrones. Four hands of gold are always cold, but a woman's hands are warm. Game of Thrones has been a lot of things over the years. Gruesome, bleak, provocative, and absolutely addictive but it wasn't really the sort of show to include celebrity cameos. It's a pretty song. I've never heard it before. It's a new one. And then suddenly, in season seven, they inserted one of the most popular pop artists of the decade with no narrative justification. Of course, if you don't know who Sheeran is, his cameo may have slipped by you, as he wasn't singing Shape of You or doing anything to draw attention to himself. But millions did recognize him, and many of them saw this as a pointless, immersion-breaking cameo in an otherwise respectable drama. <laughs> Number six, Larry David, Hannah Montana. Does anybody work here? If there's a group of people who would appreciate a Larry David cameo, it's the Hannah Montana demographic, right? Larry David, creator of two of the most acclaimed comedies in television history, Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm, seemingly randomly appeared in the episode, My Best Friend's Boyfriend, playing the typical Larry David character. You know what? I completely forgot. It's my little girl's birthday. Oh, can you help us out? No, it isn't. He certainly wasn't bad by any means. In fact, he was quite funny. It's just incredibly jarring seeing a comedy legend appear in a children's show, and his brand of comedy doesn't really mesh with Hannah Montana's. It's, it's our birthday. I, how did I screw that up? Mine was two months ago. You want to eat? David's appearance allowed him to get his real daughters, who are big fans, on the show, but that doesn't excuse the awkward pairing. Are you kidding? Number five, Kevin Federline, CSI Crime Scene Investigation. Man, you're weak, no. weak. We, uh, we. Remember when Kevin Federline was a thing? Good times. Federline appeared in the season 7 episode of CSI entitled Fanny Smackin', 
and it was every bit as embarrassing as you can imagine. You're a joke. He played Cole Tritt, the ringleader of a gang, and in one scene was punched in the stomach after taunting Nick. Oh! This moment almost seems to be some form of wish fulfillment, as Federline's reputation was still in the dumps around the time of the episode's initial airing, mostly for leaving the pregnant Char Jackson for Britney Spears sometime before. The question this cameo raises is, why cast Federline when a more experienced actor could do better? Anybody get that on video? Man, I'll take a picture myself. Number four, Bristol Palin, The Secret Life of the American Teenager. I left you a note on the door last night, but I see it's still there. Was it really necessary to cast Bristol Palin, daughter of the often mocked politician Sarah Palin? We'll answer that for you. No. With this performance, Bristol proved that she has no business or future in scripted television, delivering arguably one of the most uncomfortable performances in popular television history. We're all teen moms and musicians. Her line delivery is utterly robotic, and her facial expression never changes. It's like watching a cyborg or a video game dialogue sequence in real life. It's so forced that you assume the character is supposed to be acting off, as if she's setting up Amy to be murdered just outside the room. You're the world's greatest French horn player, and I'm Yo-Yo Ma. Number three, Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, and Ric Flair. Baywatch. What he doesn't understand is that Hulkamania is gonna be running wild, dude. The 80s and 90s boasted some of the most iconic wrestlers in the history of the industry, such as Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, and Ric Flair. You know what else was popular in the 90s? Baywatch. And you better believe that the two were brought together. The result? One of the most silly episodes of television you'll ever watch. We'll get rid of the red, cause the yellow is more than the three wrestlers appeared in the episode Bash at the Beach, fittingly named after, and shamelessly promoting, the WCW pay-per-view event. The story revolved around Ric Flair challenging both Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage to a wrestling match to decide the fate of a youth center. Seriously, we wish we were making this up. Number 2. Justin Bieber, CSI Crime Scene Investigation Where's your gun, your vest, your badge? Who on earth? Greenlighted Justin Bieber to be in an episode of CSI. Oh, excuse us, two episodes of CSI. Because why not? Bieber appeared in the 11th season as Jason McCann, a serial killer and bomber. Yes, they cast Justin Bieber as a serial killer. And that was the moment when many fans would say CSI lost all credibility. I can't. They will kill me. Bieber's acting is wooden at best, and his boyish appearance and squeaky voice is about as threatening as your kindly grandmother who bakes cookies. He's wired, he's got a bomb! He's like, there's no bomb! Look, don't shoot! Don't shoot! And then they shoot him, which, like Federline, was almost certainly scripted to go viral. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. No, we have to go out or my brother would kill me. Yo, watch out, man. What's up? Come, 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 come. Number one, Kim and Khloe Kardashian, 90210. Nothing says you're back like backless. Plus, it'll make your ass look like a ripe little melon. <laughs> All right. These two aren't number one for the sole reason of their being Kardashians. Even Snoop Dogg was really awkward on 90210, and we love us some Snoop Dogg. You know what? Don't even trip. I got my new single in the car. You want to hear? To the Kardashians' credit, they aren't the worst actresses ever. It's just a completely pointless and grating scene that serves no purpose other than to scream, look, we have the Kardashians on our show, and to promote their sister's expensive and luxurious clothing line. Naomi, we're running a business here. Combining a cringeworthy storyline, some could-be-better performances, and shameless celebrity advertising, this cameo just had to top our list. Kim, that's it, we're out of here. You better stay out of our store. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and subscribe for new videos every day.